my name is Rachel. And I'm Kimia. And we're McMaster students working in Dr. Kernu's clinic. Today we're going to be talking about one of the components on your stress test. We hope you find this video helpful. METs is a measure expressing the energy cost of physical activities. One MET is defined as a resting metabolic rate. That is the amount of oxygen consumed at rest, for example, me sitting down right here. As such, work at two METs requires twice the resting metabolism and three METs requires three times the resting metabolism, and so on. My metabolic rate while walking right now would be around 1.8 METs. My metabolic rate while jogging would be around 7 METs. My metabolic rate while doing yoga would be around 3.2 METs. Healthy individuals of different ages and genders have different optimum MET values. Right here we have a diagram showing this value for a healthy individual of different categories. For instance, if I'm a 55-year-old female, then I would have to look under average for healthy women and from 50 to 59, and the value I get here is 9.7. So if on my stress test I get any value above 9.7, that shows that I have a good horsepower. However, Say, if I can only work out for 4.2 METs, then that indicates that I have a lower power than a typical healthy female of my age. Although this factor is genetic-based, exercise and practice can help one improve their horsepower throughout their lifetime. This graph shows the mortality risk according to exercise capacity in hypertensive individuals with and without risk factors. It was found in a study that in a group of 4,631 hypertensive veterans with multiple cardiovascular disease risk factors, there was a 13% lower mortality for every one met increase in exercise capacity. In addition, mortality risk was approximately 34% to 70% lower in those with an exercise capacity of more than 5 mets. These are the current recommendations from the American Heart Association and the American College of Sports Medicine for middle-aged adults and older individuals. First, exercise should be primarily cardio exercises supplemented by muscle strengthening activities. Two, the intensity should be moderate for most individuals. However, if you are unable to sustain such walking speed, it can be at lower intensities. 3. You should exercise for at least 30 minutes continuously and preferably all days of the week. And lastly, a gradual increase in the exercise volume is recommended. Evidence supports that the blood pressure response to submaximal workloads is associated with left ventricular hypertrophy. Middle-aged prehypertensive individuals with similar resting blood pressure who achieved a systolic blood pressure of over 150 at the exercise intensity of, of 4 to 5 mets had a significantly higher left ventricular mass index compared with those with systolic blood pressure below this level. Furthermore, the risk of left ventricular hypertrophy increased fourfold for every 10 unit rise in systolic blood pressure beyond the threshold of 150 at 5 mets. The systolic blood pressure of fit individuals at exercise intensity of 4 to 5 mets and left ventricular mass index were significantly lower when compared to the blood pressure and left ventricular mass index of low fit individuals. In addition, for every 1 met increase in the workload achieved, a 42% reduction in the risk for left ventricular hypertrophy was observed. Finally, 16 weeks of aerobic training resulted in significantly lower blood pressure at 3 and 5 mets, and regular exercise was associated with left ventricular mass regression in older individuals with stage 2 hypertension. <laughs>